we will see about classification of articulators. You all have seen an articulator in your preclinical lab or your clinical lab. You all know this is a mean value articulator, what I'm showing here. You have the upper member, the lower member, the condylar part, the incisal rod, the in mid incisal pin and the incisal table. So this is part, these are the parts of the mean value articulator. We all have commonly seen these, but there are much more to articulators than what we have uh, seen in our lab. So uh, for theory part, you need to know about the other parts of other uh, types of the articulator also. In this video, I will tell about the main uh, four uh, types of articulators, which you should know for your viva and theory parts of the exams. So based on adjustability, the articulators can be non-adjustable, semi-adjustable or fully adjustable. But based on function, they can be class 1 to 4. The class 1 and 2 are non-adjustable articulators, whereas 3 is semi-adjustable and 4 is fully adjustable. So what is a class 1 articulator? It is a non-adjustable articulator as I told already. And it's a simple instrument, nothing uh, complicated about it. it. It accepts only one static registration. It accepts only vertical movement. Okay, Only vertical movement is possible. Hinge articulator, slab articulator, barn door and uh, Geiss simplex are examples of um, a class 1 articulator. And as you see here in this picture, it is a slab articulator. Class 2 articulator again comes in three types. Okay, so First of all, what it is, it, it permits horizontal and vertical movements. It does not accept face power record. That is a disadvantage. Uh, and uh, what we commonly use, the mean value articulator is also a class 2 articulator. It is non-adjustable. Okay? Uh, but it, uh, there are three other types in a uh, class 2. It uh, the Based on arbitrary values, arbitrary theories or records. Uh, depending on that, it will be either A, B or C. For example, the type A will be dependent on the arbitrary values, that is average values. Uh, the mean value articulator is dependent on the mean values. Okay, what are the three fixed mean values that it is dependent on? It is also known as three-point articulator. Intercondylar distance is assumed to be 110 centimeter. Condylar guidance is assumed to be 30 degrees. And incisal guidance is assumed to be 15 degrees. All these three are the average values of the range which will be present in the patient. Okay, So they have fixed values. Uh, so therefore, no adjustable uh, feature here. And uh, based on these fixed values, this articulator will work. The type B of the class 2 will be based on the arbitrary theories of motion like uh, monsoons. Uh, you already know some of the theories of uh, occlusion, right? The theories of occlusion. So here, uh, monsoon, I'll explain. Uh, like uh, the first picture what you saw here is a monsoon articulator. Uh, the glabella, uh, monsoon considers the glabella as the center point. That is the point where you keep your bindi right between your eyebrows. Up. From there, uh, if you draw an imaginary sphere, okay, the imaginary sphere, the surface of the sphere will be uh, coinciding with the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. That is what he said, okay, both the occlusal and incisal surface of the teeth. That is what a normal occlusion or ideal occlusion looks like according to monsoon. So, uh, if it is based on that theory, then that articulator will be the monsoon's articulator. So, and the class 2 type C will be based on the records from the patients like houses, needle house method for recording the jaw relation, you know, right? If you want to know more about that, please refer to our video on jaw relations. So, if it is based on that uh, theory, uh, that method, then it is houses articulator. Class 3 is semi-adjustable as I told before. It accepts phase bow transfer, which is one of the major advantage and a major shift in uh, compared to class 1 and 2. It permits horizontal and vertical motions also, uh, as I said before. Type A and B is present in class 3. Type A accepts only the static protrusive registration, okay? Whereas type B accepts static protrusive and lateral registration, both eccentric movements. Uh, uh, when you deal about eccentric, it could be either protrusive or lateral. If it accepts only protrusive, it is type A. If it accepts both protrusive and lateral, it is type B. Example for type A, Hanau H and dentatus. Example for type B, nail, true bite and panadenta. Uh, and this is the picture of the uh, type class 3 articulator, Hanau. And uh, class 4, it is a uh, more complicated, this is a denar articulator, it is fully adjustable, it accepts three-dimensional dynamic registrations, it accepts face bow transfer, uh, it, it is also uh, classified as type A and B. In A, condylar path registered cannot be modified, example TMG articulator, and in type B, the condylar path registered can be modified, example denar and pantograph. Uh, so this is in short about the articulators. 
uh, if you want to know more about uh, each or if you want to know more about mean value articulator please comment below we'll make a separate video on that thank you